Hello everyone, welcome back. If you remember in the last class, uh, we have discussed about the production and storage of aggregates. We discussed about the quarrying operation and we discussed that through the quarrying operation, the aggregates are further mechanically crushed and stockpiled into different sizes. We also discussed in brief about the storage of the aggregate in the plants which is typically in the form of stockpiles and even the stockpiles are stacked corresponding to various sizes. We also discussed that there can be different places from where aggregates can be sampled and then further subjected to testing to represent or to uh, evaluate the uh, representative properties of the stockpile and we concluded that the conveyor belt is one of the convenient places where the segregation of the aggregates will be minimal in comparison to the other locations for sampling. Today we will start discussing about aggregate classification and the gradation of aggregates and this is basically a very uh, important topic to discuss specifically when we uh, try to relate this knowledge with the uh, mixed design of asphalt mixtures and concrete mixtures. Talking about classification, uh, mostly for most of the pavement uh, application, aggregates are classified based on their sizes. So, if we see the typical uh, size or size distribution, it can be categorized as coarse aggregates, sand and fine aggregate. Well, this, this is not uh, the exact uh, classification, but an approximate classification. Another way of thinking about this classification is that we have coarse aggregates and we have fine aggregates. Um, so, uh, we have coarse gravels as one of the sizes and the size ranges from 80 mm to 20 mm typically. Fine gravels which are again are of large size, they range from 20 mm to 4.75 mm. So, we can say that materials which are uh, larger than 4.75 mm are basically coarse aggregates and materials passing 4.75 mm are fine aggregates. So, in the fine aggregate the first size which we have represents the sand. So, we can have coarse sand which ranges typically from 4.75 mm to 2 mm. We can have medium sand whose range can be 2 mm to 425 microns or 0 0.4 to 5 mm. We, we further have fine sand which ranges from 425 microns to 75 micron and materials that passes 75 micron sieve or 0 0.075 mm sieve they are also called as fillers, filler particles and they are of very small size and further again uh, we have two more categories. One is silt, the size of which ranges from 75 microns to 0 0.002 mm and materials which is even um, smaller than 2 microns, they are basically categorized as clay particles. So, this is an uh, approximate way different specifications, different guidelines have their own way of uh, classifying the uh, aggregates based even on sizes. Uh, this is typically an uh, Indian classification system which is used to categorize the aggregate particles based on their size distribution. Now, when we say size of the aggregate. If you remember I showed you a typical aggregate in the uh, last presentation and we saw that these aggregate particles they do not have any specific shape, a specific um, um, standard shape such as a cubical shape or a spherical shape. They are uh, they have random shapes and therefore they also have random sizes. So, even describing an average size is also empirical when we say that uh, a, there is an aggregate of size of let us say 4.75 mm or 20 mm. So, this is an empirical way of describing the average size of the particle. So, typically what we do the empirical average um, value is arrived by passing these aggregates through a set of sieves which have square openings. So, I have um, some sieves here of uh, different um, sizes. For example, you can see that 
this is again uh, a sieve which is of coarser size and uh, this is a 20 mm sieve and you can see we have square opening here. So, this square opening in fact is uh, used uh, as the uh, representation of the average size. Here we are assuming that the aggregates which uh, in question they are basically rounded or spherical in nature. So, I am assuming the aggregate as spherical in nature such that this diameter if it is less than this square opening size the side of the square opening it will get retained in this sieve. So, we will say that that particular aggregate is a material which retains on 20 mm sieve, but usually we um, say about the sizes based on two set of sieves a, a sieve which is of larger size and the second largest size. So, let us say if we have a 20 mm sieve and uh, the next standard sieve which we typically use is say uh, is 13.2 mm or 12.5 mm and I have an aggregate particle which passes this 20 mm sieve and is retained on 12.5 mm sieve. So, I can say that the average size is somewhere between 20 plus 12.5 divided by 2. So, that is the um, an approximate average size of the particle, but uh, usually we do not talk about average sizes as single uh, size based on single sieve, it is always a two sieve in question. So, we say that we have an aggregate particle which is passing x mm and retained on y mm. This is the way we describe uh, arbitrarily you can say the size of the uh, aggregate particles. And as we have discussed that aggregate particles can be of varying sizes, we can have a wide range maybe from uh, the working range let us say for a bituminous mix can be 37.5 mm or 26.5 mm down to 75 micron passing. Therefore, we also have large number of um, sieves with different sizes. So, here again in this picture you can see that uh, it shows uh, so many different sizes of sieves with different uh, sieve openings. So, we have uh, coarser openings, we have finer openings. So, here again I also have a few sieves today with me, the one which I showed you initially was 20 mm. Then again we have uh, um, further smaller sieve here. So, this is a 10 mm sieve, you can see the size of the square uh, opening uh, is, is smaller in comparison to the 20 mm sieve. Uh, then we have um, one more sieve here which um, which is 2.36 mm this is again a standard size we use so this is a 2.36 mm sieve you can see even you have finer mesh you can have even finer like 75 micron sieve will be much finer so uh, it will be very difficult to understand that it has a square opening even if you see it visually on the lower side as we are describing that we can have material 75 micron passing or 2 micron passing so, you know uh, making sieves with such small uh, apertures are very difficult. So, typically we the last sieve which we have is usually 75 micron sieve or if in, in European uh, specifications it is a 63 micron sieve let us say. So, below 75 micron sieve whatever passes we typically collect it or consider it as one material and finally, we have to uh, collect this material in something which is called a span which does not have any aperture here does not have this is not a sieve this is just a collector all right. So, this is called as span now we collect everything which passes 75 micron sieve in the pan. Now talking about the gradation now we understand uh, what aggregate sizes are and how do we know about the size using sieves. Now for any given um, mix or uh, let us say we have a concrete mix or we have an uh, asphalt mixture or a bituminous mixture, we will have aggregates of different sizes. These are not single sized mix, we have aggregates. So, we have coarser aggregates, the voids of this coarser aggregates are filled by relatively finer aggregates. Again the further voids which get created are filled by further finer aggregates and this is a process of creating a a stacked gradation. So, we have aggregates of different sizes. So, this gradation which we will be discussing now 
it indicates the distribution of aggregate particles of varying sizes in a given volume of the mixture. All right. So, it tells us that how the sizes are distributed. Um, usually or generally we desire close dense packing uh, for most of the mixtures. Uh, for example, in concrete mix we will desire a very dense uh, mix. Similarly, in a typical wearing coarse asphalt mixture again we desire a dense packing. But uh, we will discuss that we do not desire extremely dense packing because of some additional considerations, but uh, overall we need some dense packing because dense packing will, will ensure uh, proper contact between the aggregates and it will further ensure proper distribution of the load which is coming on the mixture. Now to define the gradation, to define this packing or the distribution of the aggregates what is done that aggregates are passed through the set of sieves. So, we know that there are varying sizes and in order to understand how these sizes are distributed what we do, we will take a unit weight of the mixture which has different sizes, we will put it on the top of the largest uh, uh, sieve or, or, or the sieve uh, corresponding to the largest size in the gradation and we will do sieving of the aggregates. And after sieving the aggregates through the set of sieves, we will understand based on the weight that gets retained on individual sieves that how the gradation is actually distributed for, a, for any given mix. So, the weight retained on each mix is used to calculate the percentage passing each sieve. All right. So, um, we will discuss it in the next slide that how the calculation is done which is again one of the important thing to discuss because th that will give us a working experience on how uh, aggregates are sieved in the laboratory and how the laboratory values are further used to plot the sieve size distribution of the aggregates. Uh, so, when I say plotting which means graphically I am trying to represent the distribution of the aggregate particles and this is done using a sieve size distribution curve. So, the sieve size distribution curve is a plot uh, between the percentage passing and the sieve size. So, we have different sieves as we discussed in the gradation. So, corresponding to each sieve what is the percentage passing? This is what we are trying to find out. Corresponding to different sieves what is the percentage passing? And based on the percentage passing we will be able to understand that how in that particular mix the aggregates are distributed. Based on how the aggregates get distributed in any given mix, there are various type of gradations which can be discussed. All right. It is not that all the mix will have similar form of uh, aggregate distribution is not it. So, we can have multiple gradations with multiple form of aggregate distributions. So, depending on how the plot looks like between percentage passing and the sieve size we can understand that whether these gradations are well graded structures, are they gap graded structures or they are uh, poorly or uniformly graded structures let us say. So, uh, let me try to explain you what these different gradations mean uh, visually. Uh, first of all, uh, this C size distribution curve is usually plotted in a semi log graph where the y axis is arithmetic scale which is percentage passing and the x axis is uh, the grain size, but in the log scale. All right. So, uh, you see that here we have three distinct curves. Let us say that this is the minimum size and this is the maximum size within the gradation. So, if we have a smooth running curve between the minimum size and the maximum size which you see here a smooth running curve going almost through the middle of the graph which we have drawn that is a well graded structure. All right. So, this, this will ensure that we have aggregates present in the mix of different sizes which means for each value of x you have some distinct value of y and this is continuous in nature which means that this is a well graded structure you have aggregates 
of different sizes in the structure all right. So, usually the dense packing which I was discussing about are well graded structures. We can also have gap gradation. So, what is a gap gradation? In gap gradation some sizes go missing. You have finer aggregates usually and you have coarser aggregates, but the mid size range is missing and therefore, you see that the gradation here it started to move smoothly, but in between it is flat. What does this mean? that for, for this range of x, the y is not changing much, which means it is constant, which means that particular range is missing here. And then again your curve starts to move, which means further you have a different size of aggregate particles in the structure. This says that there is a gap in the structure, you have coarser, you have finer and the mid range goes missing. So, this is typically a gap graded structure. We can also have a poorly graded or a uniformly graded structure. Now, this uniformly graded structure has very high voids and therefore, their stability is less. We will discuss more when we discuss about aggregate packing that what do I mean by stability, uh, what do I mean by voids. So, just try to understand that in well graded structure you have aggregates of different sizes though it is a close packing. Uh, in gap graded structure since few sizes are missing then you will have some more number of voids between the aggregate structure in comparison to the well graded structure. In uniformly or poorly graded, you have aggregates mostly of very small size range, which means you do not have aggregates of different sizes. Therefore, you see if you see the curve here, you will be able to understand here the curve starts from here and it ends here, which means you have aggregates only in this size, you do not have any you know large variation in sizes of aggregate or aggregates of different sizes. So, these you can say are mostly single sized aggregates and because these are single sized aggregates, the stability is less because interlocking is not achieved and also the voids are typically much higher all right. So, that is a poorly graded structure. So, these are three typical categories of aggregate gradations when we discuss about mixes used in, in pavement structure. In order to understand that how are we trying to draw this sieve size distribution curve for any given gradation. So, let us understand what do we do? You have a mix. So, you take that mix, you know what is the maximum size of aggregate there. So, based on the maximum size, you place it at the top of this stack. So, from the top as you move down the sizes of the sieves are reducing and at the bottom you have a pan to collect all the aggregates that passes through the minimum sized sieve. Let us say it is a 75 micron sieve all right. So, let us say that uh, we have used some standard sieves which are uh, given, by, uh, given by our highway agencies. So, these numbers they can be different in different highway agencies. So, these numbers which I have shown you or these sieves which I have uh, which I have written here, they are typically used in Indian system you can say uh, for bituminous mixtures, for concrete mixtures. So, these are some standard sieves uh, we use in India. So, let us say we have a 19 mm sieve 13.2, 9.5, 4.75, 2.36, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 1.35, 1.36, 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, 1.40, 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1.45, 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, 1.66, 1.67, 1.68, 1.69, 1.70, 1.71, 1.72, 1.73, 1.74, 1.75, 1.76, 1.77, 1.78, 1.79, 1.80, 1.81, 1.82, 1.83, 1.84, 1.85, 1.86, 1.87, 1.88, 1.89, 1.90, 1.91, 1.92, 1.93, 1.94, 1.95, 1.96, 1.97, 1.98, 1.99, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 1.35, 1.36, 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, 1.40, 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1.45, 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, 1.66, 1.67, 1.68, 1.69, 1.70, 1.71, 1.72, 1.73, 1.74, 1.75, 1.76, 1.77, 1.78, 1.79, 1.80, 1.81, 1.82, 1.83, 1.84, 1.85, 1.86, 1.87, 1.88, 1.89, 1.90, 1.91, 1.92, 1.93, 1.94, 1.95, 1.96, 1.97, 1.98, 1.99, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 1.35, 1.36, 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, 1.40, 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1.45, 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, 1.66, 1.67, 1.68, 1.69, 1.70, 1.71, 1.72, 1.73, 1.74, 1.75, 1.76, 1.77, 1.78, 1.79, 1.80, 1.81, 1.82, 1.83, 1.84, 1.85, 1.86, 1.87, 1.88, 1.89, 1.90, 1.91, 1.92, 1.93, 1.94, 1.95, 1.96, 1.97, 1.98, 1.99, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 1.35, 1.36, 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, 1.40, 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1.45, 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, 1.66, 1.67, 1.68, 1.69, 1.70, 1.71, 1.72, 1.73, 1.74, 1.75, 1.76, 1.77, 1.78, 1.79, 1.80, 1.81, 1.82, 1.83, 1.84, 1.85, 1.86, 1.87, 1.88, 1.89, 1.90, 1.91, 1.92, 1.93, 1.94, 1.95, 1.96, 1.97, 1.98, 1.99, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 1.35, 1.36, 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, 1.40, 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1.45, 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, 1.66, 1.67, 1.68, 1.69, 1.70, 1.71, 1.72, 1.73, 1.74, 1.75, 1.76, 1.77, 1.78, 1.79, 1.80, 1.81, 1.82, 1.83, 1.84, 1.85, 1.86, 1.87, 1.88, 1.89, 1.90, 1.91, 1.92, 1.93, 1.94, 1.95, 1.96, 1.97, 1.98, 1.99, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 1.35, 1.36, 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, 1.40, 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1.45, 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, 1.66, 1.67, 1.68, 1.69, 1.70, 1.71, 1.72, 1.73, 1.74, 1.75, 1.76, 1.77, 1.78, 1.79, 1.80, 1.81, 1.82, 1.83, 1.84, 1.85, 1.86, 1.87, 1.88, 1.89, 1.90, 1.91, 1.92, 1.93, 1.94, 1.95, 1.96, 1.97, 1.98, 1.99, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 
and uh, I have uh, in 19 mm sieve 572 gram got retained in 13.2 mm sieve 1048 grams got retained in 9.5 215 grams got retained in 4.75 162 grams got retained and there were no aggregate particles in the sieves below 4.75 mm means this is a coarse aggregate or coarse stockpile uh, which we are trying to sieve here alright. We do not have fine particles uh, in this stockpile which we have taken for gradation alright. So, then what we will do based on the second column we will do a calculation and we will find out what is the percentage of this weight retained in each sieve. So, since we are calculating percentage it is very easy for example, here you will do 572 divided by the total 1997 into 100. So, this will give you 28.64 percentage is not it. Similarly, this is 1048 divided by 1997 into 100 it will give you 52.47. 215 divided by 1997 into 100, 162 divided by 1997 into 100 and so on. So, now the third column I am using to calculate the percentage weight retained corresponding to each sieve based on the weight retained. Now, I am trying to see what is the cumulative weight retained in individual sieve. Try to understand it in this way because this is somewhere where many students get confused. So, you see 13.2 mm has 1048 grams retained. Let us say if we did not have any 19 mm sieve then of course, this 572 will also get retained in 1048. So, ideally the cumulative weight which is retained in 13.2 out of this entire 1997 is 1048 plus 572 which means 1048 plus 572 grams of aggregates are coarser than 13.2 mm sieve. I hope you are you are able to understand when I say this statement and this is what we are going to do in the next column that here I am trying to find out the cumulative percentage weight retained. So, since above this we do not have anything. So, the cumulative retained is 28.64 uh, in 13.2 this is also retained plus we have some additional material specific to 13.2. So, it is 81.11. So, this is 52.47 plus 28.64. Similarly, this is 81.11 plus 10.78 and this is 91.89 plus 8.11 which is 100 and then as you go down it is always 100 is not it because 100 percent of the material is retained. Um, uh, on 4.75 you do not have any material uh, which is uh, smaller than 4.75 mm sieve ok. So, we are almost done our final aim is calculating percentage passing. So, now since we have cumulative percentage weight retained we can calculate percent passing each sieve just by deducting it with 100. So, uh, we will just subtract 100 with this so that we get this and so on. Of course, there are other types of formula which you can apply, but ultimately the percent passing weight is something which we are interested in and every time you, you should get the same value irrespective of any method you use to do the calculation. Okay. So, I hope that through this slide it is clear that how the percentage passing weight can be calculated. Now, we talk about the uh, densest packing here. As I said for most of the purposes. Uh, we are interested in well graded structure or a dense packed structure because it will give a better interlocking between the aggregates and therefore, uh, you will have more uh, resistance to uh, deformation. Okay. But in general to understand densest packing because here the question is you know that which sizes of aggregates you are going to use. So, based on this sizes how do you generate this densest packing. Okay how will you find out that this five number of sizes of aggregates uh, which I am going to use how they should be mixed in different proportion. So, that I get the densest packing out of these sizes. So, uh, this is a very interesting question um, and but again a complicated uh, question to uh, answer specifically for um, irregular objects like aggregates. 
even for the regular objects like sphere or cube, the question is not very simple because there can be different arrangements of packing. For example, let us talk about single sized packing. If you assume that we have regular shapes like sphere, so many theories have been proposed for sphere packing. So, uh, one of the initial theories was a conjecture given by Kepler and he said that if you have face centered close packing or if you have a um, hexagonal cubic close packing. So, if you talk about these two types of packing using spherical particles of same size, then the packing ratio is the volume of solids divided by the total volume. So, the packing ratio is always constant and is given by pi by root uh, 18. And again uh, his conjecture was proved uh, by different researchers in different times. And you know there were more such theories which have come based on even more complicated form of packing of spheres. So, uh, if you see that pi by root 18 I think is approximately 74 percent, which means that in the densest packing state of single side spherical particles, the voids will be around 26 percent. Here we are not dealing with first of all a regular shape like sphere and here we are again not dealing with single sized particle. We are dealing with irregular shaped particles that too of variable sizes. All right. So, for variable sized uh, particle packing, uh, again various theories uh, were uh, given. Uh, one of the most common theory which is in use is the theory of maximum density curve and uh, this was proposed by Fuller in 1907 when he was doing experiments for concrete mixtures. And this theory has evolved experimentally, so is empirical in nature, uh, but in general has been used. Uh, and is still being used to define the packing of the aggregates in asphalt mixtures. Further, uh, there were also more theories for example, particle interfering theory. Uh, this particle interfering theory basically discusses that if a space is created between the aggregate particles, then this space can be filled by what is the next particle which can fill this space. Uh, so, it depends on the gap created and again the next size to be used. This was developed by Weemouth in uh, 1933, but is not very commonly used when we talk about uh, pavement engineering. Uh, but in pavement engineering, a fractal theory has been researched a lot and uh, various research papers can be found uh, based on the fractal theory, which was initially proposed long back around I think around 1970, which was later uh, published uh, in 1983. However, among all these uh, theories, the theory of maximum density curve is the most popular which is used for defining uh, the packing of the aggregates or for understanding the densest packing if you know that which sizes of aggregates we are going to use to develop the gradation. So, as I said that this was initially developed based on experimental observation. It is also called as Fuller's gradation and the formula defining Fuller's gradation is that P is equal to 100 into D by capital D to the power n. So, what is P here? P is the percentage passing all right. So, this is what we are interested in because in the y axis if you remember we have percentage passing. So, percentage passing corresponding to different sieve sizes defines the gradation. Let us say if we have 7 number of sieves 19 mm let us say we have 10 mm we have 4.75 mm. Um, we have uh, 600 microns, uh, we have 150 microns, uh, we have 75 microns all right. And let us say we have somewhere in between 2.36 mm. If I know that I have to create a gradation using this sieves which aggregates having average particle size corresponding to these sieves, the question is that how do I decide the densest packing. So, here the Fuller's equation helps us to calculate that what should be the percent passing corresponding to 19 mm, what should be the percentage passing corresponding to 10 mm and corresponding to all the other sieves in question, so that you get the densest gradation. So, for this 
first you have to know what is the maximum size of particle in your gradation. So, here let us say it is 19 mm, what is that maximum size corresponding to which 100 percent of the material will be passing. So, that is the maximum size. So, if you have the maximum size that is D and we are interested to find out the percentage passing corresponding to any other size of small d, you can use this formula. So, if you if I want to find for 19 mm, it will be 100 into 19 divided by 19 to the power n. We will discuss about n now. Uh, if it is 10 mm, it will be 100 into 10 divided by 19 to the power n. If it is 75 micron, it is 100 into 0 0.075 divided by 19 to the power n and, and, and so on. All right. So, this is the way of finding out the percentage passing. Now, for the densest packing, Fuller said that n should be approximately equal to 0 0.5. So, this was the initial consideration to develop the maximum density line. Okay. So, if you put n equal to 0 0.5, you will get a gradation and as per Fuller's, that gradation represents the maximum or the closest packing or the closest gradation which can be achieved using these sieves. All right. Later, it was found that the value of n equal to 0 0.5 is fine, but it is difficult to control the production, control the performance. So, after subsequent studies uh, later on, Federal Highway Association, they uh, said that it is better to use n equal to 0 0.45 and there is a specific reason that if you use n equal to 0 0.45, you can control the gradation in a uh, simpler or easy, easy manner which is typically done. So, um, these days even for in the super pave mix design or in any form of mix design when the gradation is decided, it is decided based on the maximum density line and this maximum density line is can be created uh, using the uh, FHWA value of n which is 0 0.45. So, the, here P becomes equal to 100 into um, D by capital D to the power 0 0.45 all right. So, this is an example of uh, the FHWA curves uh, based on different uh, maximum sizes of the aggregate. Uh, now, many a times students get confused about drawing this chart because uh, this is not only a graph between percentage passing and sieve size. It is a graph between percentage passing and normalized sieve size and this normalization is done based on the value of n equal to 0. 4, 5. So, in the next slide, I will show you how to create a, um, a maximum density line uh, which appears to be typically a straight line as you are seeing in this graph. Talking about the FHWA curve, it is very simple to draw a maximum density line gradation. What you need to do? First, you need to know what is the maximum size. So, let us say 19 mm is the maximum size. All right. What you need to do? Just plot a graph between percent passing and sieve size to the power 0 0.45. All right. And what you need to do? You just need to connect the origin, which is 0 comma 0, with the uh, percentage passing the maximum uh, sized particle, which is uh, 100 percent. So you just need to draw a straight line, and this is this point is 19 mm here. Okay. So, this line represents the maximum day and that is why it is easier to draw the FHWA curve and easier to control the gradation which we want to achieve uh, be, uh, relative to this maximum density line. So, uh, before we move forward in understanding gradations more, uh, there are two terminologies which are very important to define here. One is the maximum size. So, uh, here the definition which I have presented is the one which is used in the super pave mix design which says that the maximum size is the size which is one size larger than the nominal maximum aggregate size which means that in order to define the maximum size first we have to define the nominal maximum aggregate size because maximum size is one size larger it is not the size corresponding to which 100 percent of the material will necessarily pass it is just one size larger than the 
uh, nominal maximum aggregate size. And what is nominal maximum aggregate size? It is one sieve again one sieve larger than the first sieve to retain more than 10 percent of the material. So, try to understand this let us say you have so many sieves. So, we are expecting that the maximum size will have or the sieve uh, the top sieve will have 100 percent material passing the next size will retain some material the next size will further retain some material. So, first you identify the sieve which retains more than 10 percent material. Let us say we have a 19 mm sieve a 100 percent material is retained or 100 percent material is passing we have uh, let us say a 10 mm sieve uh, in which um, let us say 95 percent material is passing which means 5 percent material is retained here. Uh, then we have let us say a 4.75 mm sieve uh, through which uh, 85 percent material is passing something like this. So, if you see these three numbers in 10 mm only 5 percent material is retained all right. In 4.75 85 percent of the material is passing. So, we have 15 percent material retained. So, which means that this sieve is retaining more than 10 percent material. So, nominal maximum aggregate will be one size larger than this size. So, in our sieve the one size larger sieve is 10 mm. So, 10 mm will be nominal maximum aggregate size. Some of the specifications also defines nominal maximum aggregate size as the sieve in which at least 10 percent of the material is retained all right. So, again uh, as I said that this definition which we are looking here is based on the super PIF mixed design criteria all right. So, I hope through this you understand what is the meaning of uh, the maximum size and nominal maximum aggregate size. Okay, so, now let us see that how can you conveniently draw a maximum density line uh, because many a times when students uh, they attempt to draw the maximum density line based on FHWA equation or you can say Fuller's equation taking n equal to 0 0.45 they still do not obtain a straight line and that is where the question comes that how FHWA curves says that it is just a straight line it is not a straight line. So, what you have to do you have the sieve sizes with you for each sieve size you first um, calculate the percentage passing this percentage passing can be calculated based on the formula p is equal to d by d to the power 0 0.45 all right this formula you can use. And then you create another column which will be the sieve to the power 0 0.45. So, this will be 19 to the power 0 0.45, 12.5 to the power 0 0.45 and so on ok. And then you plot the graph between sieve to the power 0.45 and percentage passing ok. And when you actually do the x axis is this the actual x axis, but since this is a normalized scale the different points represent different sieve sizes. So, which means 3.76 re is representing 19 mm. So, the first point is uh, sorry the last point is basically 19 mm this actually is 3.76, but it represents 19 mm ok. So, this again is 12.5 10 and so on. So, uh, uh, this you can create separately this scale uh, to see uh, that which sieve is uh, you know lying at which place in the in the graph and you will get a completely straight line in this this way ok. And then for any given gradation we can compare the gradation with this maximum density line to see how dense is our gradation. So, one of the good papers which you can refer uh, is the aggregate gradation theory design and its importance of on asphalt pavement performance which is a review paper. Uh, I found this paper very interesting uh, to understand the concepts related to gradation of aggregates. This maximum density line is the theoretical maximum density line, but when we are actually deciding the gradation for any given uh, mixture a concrete mixture or a asphalt mixture we have to deviate from the maximum density line. Now, the question is why try to imagine that you have a volume where you have to place the aggregates all right. So, if you are using the maximum density line you are creating a gradation which has the least number of voids. So, by if you see by volume 
the volume of voids will be very very less. It cannot be 0 of course, but it will be very very less depending on the uh, corresponding to the maximum density line. But imagine that you have an asphalt mixture and if you imagine the volume you will see that in the asphalt mixture you have aggregates, you have bitumen and you have also have some voids. Okay? And later we will discuss that why do we desire some voids in the asphalt mixture, not in today's uh, lecture or class, but in, in some other uh, lecture when we discuss about the mixed design of asphalt mixtures. But ideally in the asphalt mixture you have aggregates, you have bitumen and you have air voids, which means in addition to the aggregates you also need some space for bitumen and air voids. So, if you use the maximum density line, you are creating a dense aggregate gradation undoubtedly, but you are not allowing any space for additional material to come in to occupy the volume. Therefore, you have to deviate the actual curve which you are going to use from the maximum density line, so that you can incorporate these additional volumes. If you think about a concrete mixture, in the concrete mixture we do not desire voids, we, we desire a voidless mix very dense mix, but even there in addition to the aggregate you have cement, you have water, you can have admixtures, which means that you need again sufficient volume for them to come in. For example, cement and water if it will not be present then again sufficient cementing property will not be achieved. So, and then hydration takes place, their products comes in. So, the volume requirement is uh, of other materials are much higher in case of concrete mixture. So, there also we have to deviate our uh, gradation from the maximum density line, so that we can have enough space for these materials to come in. Now, the question is that how do we decide that, which means what gradation should we use. So, highway agencies they make their own gradation limits based on experience. So, again this is more, more or less empirical in nature, the way we decide the final gradation deviating it from the maximum density line. So, different highway agencies has their own control on gradation. For example, uh, this is a gradation uh, given by Ministry of Road Transport and Highways in India for a, a conventional dense graded bituminous mixture. Okay? So, here you will see there is a band. So, this band represents that corresponding to each size you have a lower limit and you have an upper limit you have a lower limit, upper limit. All right. So, you have two limits here, two values, two values of percent passing corresponding to each size, lower limit, upper limit. And these limits are decided empirically based on experience, but of course, uh, this gradation will be somewhere near to the maximum density line. So, maximum density line is the reference and we deviate our final gradation. So, why there is a band? So, that we can have provision that when we mix different stockpiles, the final gradation should lie somewhere between this curve. Now, these points, this upper point, upper bound, lower bound, which I was just referring that you have two points, these are called as control points, these are also called as upper and lower limits, this can be called as a gradation band or you can you know call it by any other name, but they all represent that you have a range of values of percent passing corresponding to each size. The graph which I have shown you in the last slide is shown with more clarity here, where you have uh, the lower bound uh, or lower, lower limit and upper limit corresponding to each sizes and it is also compared corresponding to the maximum density line here. So, you see how it deviates from the maximum density line. All right. And uh, this picture is the picture of the orange book or the specification for uh, road and bridge works uh, given by the Ministry of Road Transport and Highways. And all the gradations options which we have to use in pavement construction can be found in this particular handbook. Now, depending on whether we are keeping our gradation above or below the maximum density line, our gradation can be a coarser gradation or can be a finer gradation. So, if our gradation, target gradation is on the lower side of the maximum density line, these gradations are typically called as coarser gradation. All right. And if we have gradations which is above the maximum density line, then these are usually finer gradations. So, these terms are generally applied to understand whether the gradations are coarse in nature or fine in nature.
Okay, so let us stop here today and uh, we will continue our discussion from here and we will start discussing about the blending of the aggregates which is again uh, one of the very important components to understand the mixed design process. This we will start in the next class. Thank you.